Hey guys, we're in the uh, far north of New Zealand and we're surf casting and we've been very lucky to be able to fish with Chad Prentice here, a Shimano Pro surf caster and it's, um, it's been an absolute education this week for me um, and it's going to be good to get inside your head and share with the viewers uh, all your knowledge and, and obviously what we've learnt this week as well. Yeah, no, thanks Heath for coming, it's been an awesome time. Yeah, it's been pretty cool, very cool. Caught a lot of fish, you got that big trevally yesterday, but seeing the gear that you've been using, is, it is very, very refined. You know, like you're using like six kilo mainline, the rods are really high tech. I mean, where has all this come from? Is this something that's, that's been developed in New Zealand or is this, you've got a Japanese influence in this? What? Yeah, I think over the years it's come a long way. We've, we originally started with the old bamboo and the big thick downpipe rods, but I think through a bit of a, a Japanese influence over the last five or six years, it's really come a long way. Yeah, and so we're seeing slimmer rods and they're just getting thinner and thinner and thinner to a point where you think, jingers, is this even gonna work? Is it gonna be strong enough? But they are, it's incredible technology and it's come a long way. Yeah, that's one thing that I did notice is we're trying to cast our baits a long way, a big distance. Casting is critical for this, you know, sport. Yeah, it is. It can be. When we're on surf beaches like we are now, uh, distance is a big part of it. Being able to get to the back of the holes and into water, um, that's not usually accessible. So getting wet and then having a really good cast is, is, is a major element to success. And what's the optimum length for a surf casting rod? Anything around that 14 to 14 foot 6 mark is usually about bang on. Sometimes people go to 15 foot if they want a little bit more height with their main line out of the water, and that could be because they're fishing estuaries or could be to get rid of the swell and the 90 mile and stuff like that. Yeah. And then some people will go back to a, a 12 to 13 foot rod, um, particularly if they're shorter, just because they can bend that rod. The 14's a little bit long for them, so. Yeah, okay. A great thing with the Shimano range is you've got the real high-end gear like the um, the Surf Lead Altegra rod and reels, uh, and then you you know you, you go right down the range. You've got the price pointed gear as well, but it's all been designed purposely for New Zealand, really, isn't it? Yeah, it has, and everything in the in the in the range has got a purpose. It's really good stuff. Yeah. So Chad, what are you actually looking for in a surf reel? A lot of it comes down to the, the design of the spool, having really good line lay so that way when you're casting it distributes well, but having a good depth in the spool so it's not all coming from the same area on top of each other and it spreads right up and has less friction so it comes through the guides well. And probably the, another really important thing is because you're getting out so far is you want a reasonably quick retrieve. It's nothing worse than standing there all day. So nice deep spool with good line lay and a fast retrieve. Right, and and I guess we've briefly touched on this, your casting distance is critical. What, what do you do to achieve that? The first thing is starting off with the gear, having the deep spool in the reel, and then having a lower diameter mono, so we're using 0.23, 6.1 kilo suffix advance. It's really thin, it just flies through the guides with minimal friction. We're using tapered leaders, um, like the suffix tapered leaders, the use of a tapered leader has several purposes. And one is so it has a really nice small knot between the light line and going into a leader. You can't use light line without a tapered leader because the knot size is too big and it wears on the guides with every cast. And the reverse is, is when you're landing your fish and you, you get it into that zone where it can come off, um, you're at, you've also got a nice thicker end so it protects, you've got a little bit more weight to pull it out of the waves right at the end when it matters. And then right on the pointy end, we're using rigs where the bait and sinker all become one, so it flies with a little bit more aerodynamic. It's like a pulley system it's called, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pulley rig, and the bait clips onto the imp clip, which is obviously attached to a sinker on a fast clip. That allows it all to fly as one, so it's aerodynamic. It gets right out the back, and, and that's the first aspect of it. The second one is, is when it hits the water, it releases the bait, and the bait comes up away from the away from the rig itself, away from the sinker. The sand grips um, anchors itself into the sand. The bait comes away and it sits down current. And that enables you to put on floats or skirts or any type of attractants that you can work that current to get the extra bite. That's what I like about the pulley rig. Other rigs don't quite offer that. And when a fish picks up the bait, it's not direct on the main line or the sinker. That sort of works on a 
where you get the word polypharm. So it enables the fish to actually to, to swallow and bite, the, get the bait down there as well. Yeah, without feeling that direct pressure. Yeah. So if you had one tip, Chad, for casting distance, what would it be? Probably creating enough space and time so you can get a nice smooth cast out. You see a lot of guys run at the wave and quickly deliver a bit of a cast and it goes straight in the air or they try and push the envelope and get too close to the wave. Create enough space so you're comfortable, you don't have to rush and just be smooth with your cast and gradually it'll build. That's how you, how you get better with distance over time. Yeah. When you're casting it's really, really important to ensure that you're able to bend the rod. If you can't bend it, you can't send it. So you, you want to make sure that you're able to get enough rotation of the rod and be able to load that rod up properly. And sometimes people have got too much drop between the sinker and the rod tip, so they're not quite being able to load that rod tip up properly. Right. Yeah. So by shortening it, a little bit more rotation, loads it up better, and you're able to send that bait up further. Yeah. So when you pull up onto like a stunning beach like this, Chad, what's your, what are you looking for? Where's the perfect place for you to fish? Uh, primarily looking for natural food source, so tour tours, that's a, that's a good one, always attracts fish. And you're looking at the water colour and it gives you an idea of the depth um, and what's, what's out there. So you're looking for that darker water where you're going to get some good depth to get a bait into. But then what's beyond that? And sometimes if there's a big sand bank at the back of it, nothing can travel in, into it. So you're looking like for channels and guts that... You're looking for a really good hole that's got good depth and then it's got access from the back of the bar coming in. So that allows fish to travel into your bait. Yeah, right. And like if, if you, you know, your perfect tide or perfect moon phase, has you got anything like that? Uh, generally the top and bottom can be a little bit slow uh, when, the, when the water's slack, so it's always good to have a bit of running water. I'm not too fussed whether it's low or high, it's just about being out there and giving it a go. Yeah. You got a favourite moon phase? This is, this is real good tip here. <laughs> Uh, favourite moon phase, um, I like new moon and full moon, but I like big tides. Nice big tides where they're running at a real high coefficient, C, and that means low lows, high, high highs, and lots of water running, and that gets the fish going. So um, like in most forms of fishing, bait presentation is, is critical. What, what's some of the, the tips that you'd give out for that? Yeah, I think um, bait selection and presentation kind of go hand in hand, they're really, really important. And it's about where you're fishing, knowing what you're fishing for, so you've got an idea of how to pitch that bait to the certain species. Um, whether we're chasing gurnard, we're using nice bits of fresh kawai, bright sautrous colours and greens. If we're chasing trevally, we want lighter traces, longer traces, bigger floats, and we also hide the hooks so that way they're a little bit bait shy of the ultra valleys. Whereas snapper, we're, we're looking at bright pinks and bright reds and, and yellows. The trace doesn't have to be um, quite so well hidden, it can be a little bit heavier and we have generally a lot more hook exposure. So we try and do our best so we can release our fish after we catch them. But um, the presentation is really important um, because it affects the way it sits in the water and how it's pitched to the fish. Yeah, and then obviously casting, you want to, that bait needs to stay on the hook as well? Yeah, it does, yep. And that all affects the flight of it. So you're trying to keep it slim line with the trace as best you can, but enabling it to try and be um, not so rigid, like for as if you've got a stick on there, you sort of want it to have a little bit of action, so you try not to compact the top hook too much. Yeah. Try and keep it fluffy so the fish can actually get a good taste and a good feel of it and want more as opposed to picking it up and going, no, I don't want that. Yeah. And you're holding your baits on with like your rigging elastic to, to secure it onto the hook? Yeah, really important aspect of um, rigging up is having good bait elastic. Uh, we tend to stay away from the flosses because it bulks up the hook a little bit and gets stuck on there, but the elastic comes off really easy. And it's biodegradable as well, eh? Mm. So Chad, when you're, you, know, you go to pick a rod for surf casting, what are you looking for in a rod, in a good rod? Uh, you're looking for something where, first of all, the individual can bend the rod. So if I can't bend it, I can't cast it. So that's, that's really, really important. Uh, I like rods in that 14 to 16 foot range and a really fast tip. And so what I mean by fast is when you cast, the tip 
comes up and down and it's all about that responsiveness and when it regathers and the faster it does that the less friction on the line so I'm, I'm getting optimum casting distance out of the rod tip so for me that's really really important and you want the bottom sort of third or two thirds of it to be quite rigid and stiff but with enough give in the top that when you do have a fish and you're playing that fish um, that you're not going to lose it through being too aggressive it folds away nicely and looks after those hooks in its mouth. Well Chad, thanks very much for a, an amazing last few days. I've learned so much about surf casting. We're going home with a, a big cooler bag full of fish uh, and you know we've learned heaps in the process. Um, if you want to check out the massive range of surf casting rod and reels and equipment, pop down to your local Shimano retailer and have a look. Adios, thank you.